Welcome back to Exotic Car Play Place, everyone. Thanks for joining in on this beautiful, sunshiny kind of an afternoon. Today, we're going to talk about modern vehicles and why is the technology utilized in these cars so unreliable. But there's a catch. Not every modern car is unreliable. As a matter of fact, Toyota Lexus brands value and take pride in reliability. But today, we're going to really dive into what's causing these reliability issues in modern day vehicles. Because after all, you would think new, better engineering should be more dependable. That can be engineered out, right? Wrong. Let's get into it now. There's actually some common underlying themes as to what causes unreliability in a lot of these new cars. First of all, some of it is the fact that if it's a brand new model to the market, chances are you're gonna see some unreliability factors kind of creep in there as well. As a general rule, if you're buying a vehicle or shopping for a vehicle that values innovation, there's a good possibility you're going to experience a vehicle that may spend a little more time in the shop and likely will have much more expensive repairs associated with that. But let's get into that list right now. So let's start right here with a Range Rover. Absolutely beautiful vehicles. They have every single feature of known to mankind wrapped up into one beautiful package. Now, unfortunately, there are issues that come with this. Not only is it heavy on fuel because you're talking about supercharged V8 in many of these models, you do have issues with electric park brakes in the later versions of these, infotainment systems in the later versions of these, and if you look real close, look what can actually happen. You'll notice this thing sitting down on its rump. Look at that. That is because the air ride suspension in these systems actually is highly known to fail. And when they do, they're very costly. So there's actually various reasons why a lot of these vehicles are now becoming very unreliable. Here's a great example. We have a BMW 550. Well, other than the fact that the BMWs are generally known to be chock full of technology, specifically a five series, seven series cars, they're often beefed up with many of the features and the elements that you would have grown to know and love. And as every manufacturer, of course, is trying to compete with each other, they're trying to create more innovation to attract new buyers. Now, the problem with the 550, like you see in this car here, even though it's a beautiful, beautiful machine, it performs extremely well. But if you look here, 550 basically denotes this car has the 4.4 liter twin turbo V8. Massive performance. These are ridiculously quick and they're very, very efficient. The unfortunate part is because it's a V8, BMW missed the step as you went to the older generations. Now these newer ones are a little bit better. They've taken into consideration because there was actually a lawsuit against BMW because a lot of these engines were cooking. Why? Well, the turbos were mounted between the V. The V of the engine sits like that, and the turbos were both mounted between the V, creating a very, very hot condition. And that hot condition would then start not just coking the turbos, but it would also start cooking the engine. Of course, you'd have valve guide seal leaks, you'd have leaks in general, oil leaks, all kinds of other plastic parts at the top of the V of the engine would start to roast, crack, become brittle, and you'd have failures, oil consumption. There was also timing chain issues with these engines. There was a lot of problems just for the sake of efficiency. So that's a case of unreliability due to pushing the margin of performance and efficiency. Now here's another example. Anything typically built by Dodge Chrysler and or Jeep are known to be lacking in reliability. And that is just more of an engineering exercise and a lack of creativity, but there are issues with those particular types of vehicles. And the same goes for the Honda Odyssey. Even though it's from the same side of the pond as Toyota and Lexus, it's really all not all that great. Have you also heard about the Honda Clarity? That's the all electric vehicle that Honda has been trying to plug away at. And honestly, they pretty much almost gave up because it became a failure. It's, it's not nearly the product that Lexus has been putting out. And Ford lately has been trying to become very innovative. They've got great cars, Focus RS, based on a rally spec, these are great cars, lots of fun. But then they've got the Ford GT, supercar, they've got the new Mustang GT350 and GT500 Shelbys, amazing cars in every single way, but they're still missing that ingredient and that's a little bit of reliability. For example, did you know that 1.5 million Ford Focuses were recalled for a fuel related issue, a fuel tank problem, indicator that they didn't quite get it right the first time. And then what do we have over here? This is a Porsche 996 Carrera. These started in about 1999. And even though these are one of the more unreliable 911s in history, even a bad 911 is still a pretty good car because Porsches are just that good. But these cars had problems with the IMS bearing, the intermediate shaft where they could explode and take out your entire engine with fragments of metallics. That was a problem and essentially was a ticking time bomb. Now there have been fixes for that. There are aftermarket solutions, but regardless, it was quite obvious an engineering miss on that front. And in later generations, they started making revisions to improve on that reliability. And the next one actually is the vehicle right behind me. 
and we're talking about Volvo SUVs. Now, Volvo is trying to cater to the upscale market, and of course, they seem to be the alternative. Volvo is always known for building very reliable, but very sturdy vehicles, safe vehicles. In terms of innovation, what are they doing different? I mean, this looks like a lot of other SUVs on the market, and it wouldn't be shocking to say that, in fact, in a lot of ways, it is. Now, of course, Volvo innovates. They've got unique different styling cues. Look at the rear taillight assembly. Look at the, some of the fine finishing. They're trying to compete with some of the upscale markets from BMW and Benz. They're certainly working that angle, oversized wheel package. I mean, they're doing all the right things. You've got LEDs. They're moving the grill size up. Everything is following suit in the industry, but they're doing something different and innovative. And this can challenge the dependability, and it does, because Volvo has slid down the dependability ranks. Why? Because of innovation. Volvo has now dabbled with turbocharging and supercharging all in one engine. Many manufacturers go naturally aspirated. That means no turbos, no supercharging, nothing, just free breathing. Many other manufacturers have incorporated turbos, others two turbos, and some supercharging. But Volvo is incorporating both for the sake of reducing turbo lag, but at the same time, producing better high-end power. They do it, couple that with a very small engine, and the desired goal is ultimately better efficiency and more power. But of course, reliability is going to take a hit with time. What's that gonna look like in six or seven years from now? Cadillac Escalade, one of the most famous full-size luxury SUVs available on the market today. Movie stars use them. CEOs, anybody who needs a full-size luxury vehicle, this seems to be the stop. But they've had their reliability issues and some of it's innovation, some of it's just quality. Now, on some of the previous generations, there's been issues with door handles coming off. There's been issues with wheel hubs on the front end where the wheels can actually become dislodged, dismounted, come apart. Of course, infotainment systems are huge on these in terms of their lack of functionality. The Q system found in the modern day Cadillacs have not been working all that well. It's still a work in progress. And because they're trying to do new things, it's always these infotainment systems seems to be an underlying issue, not just with the Cadillacs. Lots of vehicles, Lexus struggles with infotainment systems, and there's a lot of brands that can't quite get the infotainment systems right. F-150, now you ask what's so innovative about a pickup truck? Well, they're one of the first to come up with a turbo V6 engine. So it was a great design, it was a great innovative thought process, but they had issues along the way. As a matter of fact, the EcoBoost is the turbo six. But look, what do we have under there? A leak. I mean, any vehicle can leak, sure, but they did have their problems. Carbon fouling, other issues, fuel system related, turbos, surging. There was problems associated with these vehicles. Took some time to work out some of the bugs. They are getting better, but essentially that is a problem. And it largely due to innovation, trying to do something that no one else has. We have here an Acadia or you have the Chevy Traverse, essentially a very similar vehicle. Wheelbase is slightly different, more or less built on the same platform. Now they're great vehicles. Again, they can fit the bill for a lot of young families or medium sized families where they have to haul more people around. Lots of great things going for these vehicles. But the problem is they've introduced a new nine speed automatic transmission. Now that has been the thorn in their side. Of course, all these brands are trying to create new innovations for bragging rights, for efficiency, performance. Well, the more gears you add, the chances are the better you can find that sweet spot so you can improve performance, fuel economy, and the like. Isn't it also cool you can tell Bob at work that you have one more gear than him or two more gears? Absolutely. With a nine-speed transmission, have unfortunately had a lot of problems. They've been plagued with issues, and these vehicles have found themselves in the shop over and over and over again. And as a result, it's the very innovation and the desire to push the boundaries that have created a problem for these vehicles. And now as a result, reliability is taking a back seat. So the next vehicle on the list is the Audi A4, or really not so much the A4, anything with the base two liter turbocharged engine. Now this is a newer one, this is a 17, but if you go back to 2009 to 2011 in that range, lots of problems. The two liter turbocharged engine, problems with carbon buildup, timing chain tensioners that would fail and bung up the engine. You had issues as well with massive oil consumption from some of the earlier models. Again, if you had cars that were in that 09 to 011 range, you likely saw heavy oil consumption as well. Lots of problems related to that engine. It was a bad problematic engine, but it was popular. They sold a lot of them. It had great performance and economy. Otherwise, if you get past the point of having to add oil every time you stop. Now, what does all this really mean? I mean, how is that innovative? Well, the point is small, two liter turbocharged engine, four cylinder engines. That's the theme. That's where some of this innovation strikes some of these manufacturers. And so what is the reality? How is innovation affecting reliability and creating a worse condition and more unreliable vehicles? Well, it's because 
In fact, many of the manufacturers push the boundaries. They want to create cars for bragging rights, more power from smaller displacements. They want to use turbos and superchargers. Sometimes they want to incorporate electric motors as well. There's lots of innovation as well as the digital displays, digital dashboards, infotainment systems. Those are all areas that a lot of these vehicles see failures. Do you know what is the worst vehicle for reliability on luxury brands? It's Tesla, that's right. BMW, Audi, Mercedes, they're all up there. They're sort of midway and slightly worse in terms of average reliability. But Tesla is the top, and Tesla, you can't argue with autopilot, full electric system, one of the first fully electric cars out there, is top of the heap in terms of innovation. But this all means reliability takes a hit. So currently in today's market, if you're talking about a summary of the vehicles that have the most challenges with reliability, it's the small turbocharged engines. It's cars that have lots of electronic technology within, infotainment systems that are far more advanced. Likely you'll see issues there. As well as many of these manufacturers now that are revving up in terms of the number of gears that they're using in the automatic transmissions. Those create more problems. Some of these new nine-speed transmissions have issues. So do CVT transmissions. Those are also equally garbage. Very fragile, one speed fits all. Not a great transmission from a performance or a reliability standpoint. So CVTs, cheap to manufacture, relatively cheap to send on their way. It's that level of innovation sometimes works against these manufacturers and these brands. Thanks a lot everybody, I know you enjoyed the video and if you did and you wanna learn a lot more about reliability, check out these two videos right there. You're gonna learn a lot from that too. If you're in the market, it's gonna help you a lot. Thanks again everyone, I really hope to see you on the next one. Catch you soon, bye-bye.